Welcome to this rebroadcast featuring Chris Shea of Life's Journey Life Coaching and author Lisa DeLay. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com. Well, thank you. And uh, happy Father's Day to your husband as well. Yeah, we had some fun. We did um, a trail ride and we got some ice cream. At long last, we were hunting around for ice cream. And, and in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, everything's closed on Sundays. Most everything. Oh. So, which is actually nice. fine. Um, yeah. But we were kind of like, what? And other places closed again. And my daughter was <laughs> like, no Dairy Queen. I don't care where we go, but no Dairy <laughs> Queen. We're like, I don't know what. Okay. So we were. Uh, at, least, at least Dairy Queen doesn't sponsor us. That's a good thing. <laughs> so, like, what do you have against peanut butter parfaits? What What's wrong with you? I don't know. So we finally got to a really good place that makes their, they have their own cows and they make their own ice cream. So we, but I only got back 20 minutes ago. So if I have a crazy look on my face. <laughs> oh, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I've, I've had a hour or so to relax from working outside and having fun and all. So. Yeah, so it's, it's okay. It, you know, it, it's all about family, and that's, you know, what we're talking about. So, you know. Rhiannon's supposed to get in here. We had a deal. Get in here. Well, she's on. Oh, I know. You're hiding. Get in here. <laughs> Up. If I have it to looks be like stern. She is, she is trying to come on. She was, Wait, she was hiding. All right. I think she was waiting for you to be here. All right. Did you ready for me to order you around? <laughs> no, I'm just hiding today. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, and you're all matchy. Okay. See you and hear you. Matchy, yes. <laughs> yeah, I showed up at our Father's Day dinner, and my aunt's like, oh, I'm wearing blue and purple, too. I'm like, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's apparently everybody's matching today. So. And you had all these festivities, and you baked cake. Yes. I baked two cakes Saturday, um, wow. middle of the day. And I don't have air conditioning, so, you know, to turn on the oven was like, am I seriously doing this? Yes, I love my brother, and it's his birthday. And, <laughs> and um, his wife's gluten-free now because she was recently diagnosed with celiacs. So it's it's like, okay, I'm going to pretend I know what I'm doing and make a gluten-free cake. So oh that gosh. actually it actually went well. Um, go figure. <laughs> I don't know. And so, <laughs> so first thing this morning, we had... Um, my nephew's birthday party. We only got him for a couple of hours and then uh, had to take him back home. And then, um, yeah, my brother's birthday and my father's day for my grandpa, the whole family was there. It was chaos. And I just got, I got home less than an hour ago. So yeah, <laughs> it's like, I really want a nap, but instead I'm here. <laughs> I know that's she's being nice to me. She's, you know, she's doing me a favor. you don't always need to be napping. <laughs> you I can got, nap. Live okay, life, wait, enjoy wait, life. Wait, wait, wait. wait. When you're dead. It, but between baking the cakes and then today's craziness, I slept for four hours on my mother's love seat. I'm five foot six. That couch is not. <laughs> so, so I really need a nap, but it's okay. I can I can soldier on for a few more hours and then just collapse in bed for like three days. <laughs> well, I, I will give you the fact of suffering without air conditioning because I wouldn't do yeah. that. So. Yeah. <laughs> You, you get props for the no, lack of air conditioning. Strong. Don't go, don't go soft like Chris, because you know no, what? No, no. Don't go strong. Once people get into that central air, they go really soft. I'm going to be yeah. honest with you. My friend got central air, and she just, just no offense, Chris, but she turned into a real weakling. Okay, and <laughs> I don't know if that's if that's something we want to do, uh, just as a as a people group, as as a society. Yeah. yeah. Well. <laughs> In, in 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 normal uh, talk on societal issues, I would totally agree with you, Lisa, except for the fact that you are speaking from the northern reaches of our country and I'm in the southern reaches. Oh. Makes a big well, difference. Well, I'll tell you, inside right now, it's about in my room. I'm It's probably 92 in here. I'm a little sweaty. Oh, it's uh, 91 good. here. I was just it's, looking at the weather. It's 91 degrees here and high humidity, so... It's very hot inside, and so it's usually it easily gets up in the 90s in in the house, also in the lawn, mm -hmm. and that's actually cooler than outside. Isn't <laughs> <So, laughs> it great? Well, then I will sit here in my nice, cool 72 mm -hmm. degrees, and uh, 
either <laughs> way. No, I don't think that rolled on because I'm not sweating and I'm comfortable. Uh, yeah. and- I, I I consider just I just figure my life right now these last few years God's taking me through through some character building and so <laughs> I yeah. sweat in the summer and you know I just parts of my car are duct taped on you know <laughs> when I get that book deal and put my life back together then then it'll be a whole different thing but right now I'm I'm experiencing the nitty gritty of life you know <laughs> it's okay <laughs> I eat a lot of freezer pops and and oh, I'll, just, I'll just let them drip <laughs> drip down not the freezer pop part but the condensation the ice just goes whoosh, and I'm like yeah whatever I'm okay with I'm okay with like ice dripping down on my face. Mm-hmm. So you gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> uh, I I grew up in in the northern areas without AC and that was fine, but not well, any Virginia longer. Virginia is really muggy. That it's the humidity that's so bad. I think. Well, I don't know. I was down. I was down in. Um, I wanna, I'm having a blank out. What's it, what's it, where Bush Gardens is? Help me out. I'm blanking. Near Bush Gardens, it's called Williamsburg. It's Colonial Williamsburg. Oh, yeah. Col- yeah Colonial, Colonial Williamsburg. Williamsburg where everybody Virginia. dresses up and they're like sweating mm-hmm. and they have all these mm-hmm. like, you know, 28 layers of clothes on and they're like, mm-hmm. you know, back in old fashioned times. And they're just mm-hmm. profusely sweating and you feel really bad for them, but they're trying to be. They're trying to show you what it was like. And you ask for, like, you go into the restaurant and they'll be like, you ask for ice water and they'll give you this whole big thing how there was no such thing as ice water. Mm-hmm. And, and, and then and you're like, okay, but they'll give it to you, but not without telling you why they didn't have any. And you'd only get water if it happened to rain and everybody would drink beer. And, and after a while, I'm just like, just give me some water. And then... <laughs> Or the beer. Yeah, or the beer. Um, but at first, you're just like, I don't care. I'm dehydrated. And then the, and the other obviously difficult thing is that people who are like, they're in character, okay? And so there's people who are black who are helping you. And obviously, they're supposed to be slaves, okay? Because it's period. And you're kind of like, mm-hmm. I am um, super awkward right now because, you know, you're like, should I help you? Like you're, you're like, I'm really sorry. You're like you want to be like, I'm so sorry for what's going on right now. I mean, I know you're paid for this job, but like, I know I'm really sorry about this. It's always like you're conflicted the whole time, and and uh, but also, but also super interesting, and super historical, and but you're also like, mm-hmm. oh, God, it! I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm like I did not want this to happen. So, but that was really mm-hmm. interesting. But the one big thing was that it was super, super muggy, and how people who would be like appointed as governors from other places like England and other, they would like feel like they were being tortured because they, here they were in Virginia being punished by summer, by mm-hmm. summer mugginess. Mm-hmm. And uh, they were like, thanks a lot. So. Yeah. I think there was a reason that, you know, many of the founding uh, people of our nation settled up in the new England region <laughs> and kind of left the Southern to themselves for a while. I, I think that was a wise move on the pilgrims yeah. part because I know they drifted a bit more to the North than they wanted, but I think that was divine providence. <laughs> oh. And then some of us were lucky enough to be born in the Kansas city area and we get the worst of the heat and the worst of the mugginess. And it, we're just, oh. it's no fun. I want to move <laughs> far, far away. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it might happen. You never know. Someday. <laughs> <laughs> Someday, I'm counting pennies in a jar. You know, if I do without air conditioning and if I do without this and that, then it puts me that much closer to something new. But yeah, we'll see. And makes you a stronger exactly. person as opposed and, to me. And you know, <laughs> some things in life they just give you more to write about. So you know, yeah, yeah, there that's what go. I need. There you I need go. my main character's air conditioning to go out and just, <laughs> I can write all week on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, as we were driving home from our little adventure, we, um, I asked my kids, well, my, my son felt like, how can you force us to bike ride? We're supposed to have our freedoms. It's summer. And it was just nonstop. <laughs> uh, and I was like, you know, you're going on a bike ride mostly in the shade. And then we're getting like food and ice cream. I, think it's a pretty good deal and he's like you just want me to be forced but anyway he was just ranting and raving he was ranting and raving all afternoon 
And then I, as we're driving home, I said, you know, this is what the topic's going to be about. So what do you think is the perfect family? So I was asking them, what do you think, what, is there such thing? And is there such a thing? And what is that? And so I was listening to see what they would say. And, and um, my son was kind of, didn't have too much to say because he was, still, he was still had a lot of grievances. But, um, but my daughter said, well, you know, when you have a couple of parents that love you and you know, they don't just buy everything for you. I mean, she was kind of saying all the stuff that I was kind of hoping she'd say. And I thought she might throw in a couple like hint, hint, you know, uh, but it actually was kind of what I was hoping she would say. And, and I said, well, um, you know, explain what you mean by that your parents love you and explain what you mean by, um, you know, like what, what does that look like? And what does that mean? And what, what do you think people expect? Mm -hmm. Because nobody, I don't know, maybe tell me, Chris, cause you've had a lot more experience with this, but anybody, you t Why? because, because you've been, <laughs> done political work and you've heard a lot of stories. <laughs> Oh, clinical work. Okay. Yeah, I thought you meant older and have a family longer. You, but we're not going to get into that. Um, <laughs> well, no, we won't go there. Just we don't keep have moving. To, we don't have to go there. But um, <laughs> you know, let's, 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 let the, let the uh, breeze dry the tears on my face. But um, so, so I had <laughs> made me lose my train of thought. <laughs> oh, great. Help me out. Oh, yeah, yeah. The perfect family. So everybody you ask pretty much will say, they'll either say something like, you know, some kind of horrible story, some kind of more or less horrible story, or some pieces that were not great. And then some people, and I've for some reason noticed that there's more guys who say this. I don't know if females just take things harder, or maybe I've just met all the wrong sorts of females. <laughs> but my, my husband <laughs> is like, yeah, you know, things were okay, things were fine, or whatever. But I wonder if there, he only has one brother. I wonder if there had been a, um, if he had had a sister, if she would have said the same thing or if she would have been like, here's all the stuff that I noticed. Here's, here's everything that happened. And I think a lot of people, it depends on what their expectations were, what they really felt like they needed that they didn't get. And so I don't know if, if you've heard over the years of people think, what's the perfect family? They're just going to say whatever that they didn't get. Do you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, no, and, and from what I've heard and even what I hear currently from a lot of my clients who are dealing with either marital relationship or family issues, which is a lot of the teens I'm working with. Uh, yeah, I, I think we as humans tend to judge what perfection is based on what we don't have. So just like you were mentioning, Lisa, that you know, if somebody were to, you know, ask a, a lot of people, what is, you know, did you have a perfect family? I think most people would say no for various reasons. And, you know, so we do, I think, naturally tend to judge by what we think is what we lack without stepping back and taking a look at, but what is all the good that you do have? You know, I mean, except for the the families, you know, that maybe there really isn't much positive, and unfortunately, that right. happens. But I think for the majority of people, if you step back and and do a little bit more reflecting, you'll find out there there's more commonality than maybe what you originally thought because you're constantly comparing it to, yeah, but my friend's mother does this, or my you know friend's father mm -hmm. does this. Um, or I grew up without a father or without a mother or whatever it may be. And uh, mm -hmm. so I, I just think that might be human nature, you know, that we reflect on more of the negative and what we think we're missing than focus on those mm -hmm. positives. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we're also told what we're missing. Like in, mm -hmm. in my case, um, I don't know who my dad is. Never have, never will. Um, so I was told, I was presented from a very early age as – if you had a dad, you would have this perfect life. If you had a dad, you would have this much more of this or that much more of that. Um, I was told I was missing something from the word go. Right. And so for a long time, I think I was looking for something that I didn't have because I was told what I was missing. Hmm. And even though I appreciated what I did have, it never quite measured up. And, mm -hmm. and I think had that been handled differently, um, I might have actually had a much easier childhood. 
because that that was weighing on me because you know I, I didn't care if my friends had dads or didn't have dads or if they had you know siblings or didn't have siblings whatever their makeup was they were who they were and yet I couldn't accept that about me because it's like oh well you're missing this piece you're missing this important part mm -hmm. but I wasn't I had everybody has fatherly influences in their lives everybody has maternal influences as whether mm -hmm. it's the actual father and mother or not. Mm -hmm. um, and so I really had a, a pretty healthy environment in a lot of ways. Um, that wasn't really missing, but I was told it was missing. Right. So it actually took a long time until I was in my late 20s when it's like, oh, you know what? Even if I had the opportunity to find my dad, I don't know if I would. Mm -hmm. Because I realized now mm -hmm. that part of my life was never missing. Mm -hmm. was yeah and I, I don't know if that's worth the upheaval you know not that that's really a chance but if it would it be worth the upheaval yeah. to to change someone else's family right. dynamics to change my family dynamics on something that i was told was missing that maybe wasn't i don't know it's it's um mm -hmm. i don't know if there is a perfect family other than just people you can be real with and and love and grow with and that doesn't have to be blood relation it can be people on the internet, it can be, you know, friends from church or whomever um, just makes up the part of your life that you are at home in. Mm -hmm. So I and, and I think you bring up a, a very important point, you know, with people telling you, you know, what you were missing, where, you know, I also think more generally, is our society trying to tell us what is the perfect mm -hmm. family? You know, and maybe less so now to some degree yeah. but I, I know growing up if you looked at most of the tv shows uh especially your comedies you know they were trying to show you what was supposed to be the perfect mm -hmm. family and how you know how much you fall short of that you know and and i still hear that uh, uh, sometimes today from people you know, when they'll talk about, you know, wanting certain things or lacking certain things. And if I ask, well, where is that coming mm -hmm. from? And a lot of times they'll say, well, just watch TV, you know, look at the movies, you know, they have all this stuff. Um, but like you're saying, you know, what, why, why are we comparing and judging that? Why is somebody thinking that just because, you know, it's, it's what society shows us is what it's supposed right. to be. And, you know, something I have recently wondered, um, and it pr probably stemmed most from um, some recent debates about, you know, gay marriage, which has been legal for a year now. But a lot there are a lot of voices out there saying, oh, well, you need a mom and a dad to raise kids. And and it's like, OK, I heard that growing up so much. You you're missing your dad's in, in your life and all this this um, all this is is not as good as it could be. Mm -hmm. But would someone tell that to a child whose father went off to war and died or whose father was in a car accident and died or was taken from the family in, in some more natural way than just being absent. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't tell that kid, oh, you're missing out on having a dad. You, you, they wouldn't, right. the society would not put that expectation on other, a situation like that. So why does it seem to be so um, shoved down the throats of kids like it my situation where the dad just isn't there or you know mm -hmm. a, an adoption whether it's a single parent or whatever family is not just this nuclear handful of people that live in the same house family far surpasses that so it, yeah, it really true. depends on what you're told your expectations are yeah, and true. people tell different people in different situations what those expectations should be yeah, I, I think it, it depends, definitely depends on the person because I've talked to people like you, well, not even people like you, but people who've said, you know, I, I kind of didn't know what I was missing, so I didn't, I don't really know. Mm -hmm. And then there are people who've been like, there was all, I always missed, I always missed out because they were comparing, they idolized their neighbor's dad throwing ball with their best friend and they were like well my dad my dad's an example of that so he, he had a dad growing up but his dad worked, worked third shift so he felt his dad was always sleeping when he wanted when he could have been playing with him he ha had to sleep so he felt like he kind of grew up on his own and his much older sister basically raised him and his parents 
which was strange because in the in the 50s moms often didn't work out of the house but his mom always did and so anyway all that to say was that he felt like i really missed out i had to learn ball from my friend's dad how to how to play baseball blah blah blah, blah. so he felt like i was missing something i was missing something but i've also heard people say but that's only because he compared himself Mm-hmm. But I've also heard people right. say, well, I don't know if I missed something because how do you know what you've missed if you didn't have it? Right. So, so it's kind of like, well, mm-hmm. you could you could look at it either way. It would be a perspective. It would be a decision how you're going to frame it. Mm-hmm. You know, And you could definitely mm-hmm. get those other influences from coaches, from mentors, from yeah. other relatives if you, if you wanted to wanted to seek those out. And I was a big sister and big brothers, big sisters for five years. And that's kind of what that's for too. And so there's other ways that you can do it. Mm-hmm. And, and so it's kind of like, mm-hmm. you know, you can take a negative, you can take a negative spin on it and you can feel really left out and bummed out that your life didn't go mm-hmm. in this perfect way that you wanted to. But, you know, I, I guess it's just a matter of how you want, if you want to feel like you've been shortchanged. Yeah, because I right. I would say oh, sorry, and, and go again, ahead, Chris. I was just you know saying that that again is that influence that when we listen to what other people tell us and you know how much do we allow other people to tell us what our reality is or what we should and and I, I hate that word for a lot of reasons but you know what we should be doing or should be feeling. You know, it's like when you say, you know, well, if somebody were to say, you know, I don't miss not having a parent because I've never had, you know, say both parents. And and then it, it can bring in that self-doubt when people say, but you should feel bad. You know, well, why should I yeah. feel bad? You know, and if you hear it more and more that, well, you should, then the more that I hear that I should feel bad, maybe then I start to think my judgment is off and maybe I should be feeling bad. And then I start feeling bad, and I don't know why I'm feeling bad. Yeah, but who, who are they <laughs> to say? You know? Yeah, but who are they? Who are they to yeah. say that? Because they just feel bad for you because they're imposing what they've known. Like it's kind of like it's kind of like saying yeah. people do this to the deaf people in the deaf community all the time, and they'll say, "You poor thing, you can't hear." And a lot of people in the deaf community are like, "But I never could hear, and I'm fine, and I actually don't even want to hear." I have. Right. I have my people and they have their own grammar in, in sign language and they have their own group mm-hmm. and they, they really enjoy it and they're very connected and they don't actually, given the opportunity, some of them pick to stay deaf. And they're like, I'm not missing out. I, I'm very happy with my life. Right. And they actually, yeah. some people in the deaf community are against uh, young children getting the cochlear implants to be able to hear again when they're actually born deaf. And it's mm-hmm. like, so a hearing person is gonna say to a, a person born deaf, oh man, you're really missing out. It's like missing out to you, but they don't know mm-hmm. that they're missing out because they've never missed anything. It's, you know, it's just like mm-hmm. you're deciding that they're missing yeah. out because you've experienced a different life. And that's, I've, I've um, looked into a lot of theology of disability and that will really change how you think about God and it'll really change how you think about other mm-hmm. uh, people who are not like you. Because who, it's this right. ableism. You you will say, oh, I'm normal and I'm able-bodied and able-minded and all this stuff. And, and I feel so sorry for people who aren't exactly like me. It's like, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, could that be more mm-hmm. arrogant? <laughs> oh, okay, exactly. what? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's just like, and, and so, but, but that is really automatic for, for mm-hmm. people typically. And they'll feel, you know, it must be so hard to be you. It's like, and and sometimes people in the disabled community are like, it must be hard to be so dumb because you are so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. with me. <laughs> it's, you're just not- and, and I, I would love that come back. You <laughs> <Yeah>. know, <laughs> must be hard to be you. You can who's, hear all this stuff that you're saying. Worse <laughs> off, me being fine with me, or you being a wreck because I'm because you're not fine with me being me. Like, who has the problem here? You know, and it and it's mm-hmm. like it really makes you question um, the upset able person or the completely contented disabled person. Really, the completely contented disabled person. Hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, and for me, that that's really the the whole thing when I think about you know this word mm-hmm. perfect is really where you are you know mentioning uh, with that because it's always imperfect when we judge. Mm-hmm. But if we can accept who we are, 
with what we have, then we're perfect in that way. Mm. You know, I, I look at the um, scripture passage where Jesus tells the apostles, you know, that you need to be uh, perfect as my heavenly father is perfect. And for me, who is quite on the OCD side, I read something like that and go, oh, well, I'm in deep trouble because, you know, the OCD side says, well, you're like far from that. And, you know, you got to be like God now. And how are you going to do that? But the more that I, I've reflected on that and studied on that, it really seems to be that what he was telling people is God is the, the one creature, if we want to say, that is content with who God mm -hmm. is. And I think what he's trying to tell the people is you need to be perfect just like God is perfect in the sense of be content with who you are and act the way that God would want you to act. If you're loving to people and caring with people and sharing and all those qualities and content with yourself, even with any defects you think you have, to me, that's yeah. being perfect. So when you look at something like that and then put it into families and, you know, what we're saying about, you know, all of, you know, this thing of, you know, well, what's the perfect family, not the perfect family. Well, one define family and two is this family unit content with who they are, even with imperfections that they mm. think they have. And I think that's the important thing because it's the imperfections that we think we have. You know, like like you say, you know, if, if somebody were deaf, we might think that's an imperfection. If they don't, it's not <laughs> no, an imperfection. Right? It, it's so you know. I, I think we we need to clarify when we say you know my family isn't perfect because of all of these problems, but there are problems and defects that we are perceiving them as the problems and defects, where society is telling us, well, this is yeah. not right. Um, of course, I'm not talking about abuse and things like that, but, you know, so I, I think a lot of it comes into that notion of how how can we change our perspective on how we define perfect? Yeah. And, and that's the thing about um, I love the perspective of in terms of how you want your what, whoever you call your family, whether now being separated from my family about five hours away from my biological family, my friends, I consider my closest friends, I consider my family and, you know, family of choice or however you're going to say that. And, um, and also through the years as my family has been like super highly dysfunctional, that had to be the case to, to get me through. And, and so I always think of these people as people that I want to improve those relationships and that closeness and, and things like that. But it's important to know whether it's your family or your family of choice that, it's never really going to be you know, perfectly harmonious or perfectly good. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be misunderstandings. There's going to be problems, mm -hmm. but that of keeping the idea that I'm not going to allow myself to be disappointed when my expectations get, you know, I'm going to misplace my expectations and then I'm going to get disappointed. But instead of being like, Oh, great. Well, I guess that's not going to work either to, to be keeping in mind this idea of it's, it's not there yet, but that, keeping that yet there, because that means that you're going to keep trying and that the story isn't over. And I love the idea of including yet into every, every possible situation, but especially every relational situation, because it's yeah. not, I was, I was just having a talk with a family member who remained nameless because I was so scared that he's not come back to bite me. But, um, but the idea was that, um, you know, this, this relationship was like, well, this is how it is, blah, blah, blah. And we've tried and da, da, da. And I said, but that is just a perspective. That isn't really real. This is what you've decided mm -hmm. that it is. And if you both decide, well, yeah, it is like how it is. But if you said, well, it's not there yet, doesn't that kind of leave a crack open that, mm -hmm. I mean, doesn't mm -hmm. that make it a different reality? Definitely. I don't think that she wanted to hear that really because I think she had her mind made up and I, I think that I think that it's kind of like well pff, I've made my decision I've already kind of decided that I, yep. but I'm kind of like well it seems like you're not really happy with that though it seems like that's really disturbing I didn't say this part by the way I think I would have been murdered but <laughs> but, uh, but it's kind of like it's obviously distressing or we wouldn't even be having this conversation right so it's really distressing mm -hmm. 
the same time, it's like, well, this is how it is. And I don't know. No, no, no. And it, it's just never been great. And, oh. and I said, but, but it's like, you just put it in a frame and decided this is how it is. And you know, it's on the mantelpiece now, this disaster. And I'm said, but it's, you take it out of that frame and you, and you put yet there and then mm -hmm. you go, yeah, it stinks right now. It's not good yet, but mm -hmm. we still have yet. Like I just, mm -hmm. I can't, I can't deal <laughs> with that. The story has, you've just decided the story's over because even if that person dies, you could still in a way add to the story because you are a person who can change mm -hmm. too. Right. So mm -hmm. I don't know. That was my soapbox. I'll get down. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think everybody, especially in family, whether it's blood family or chosen family, they need room to grow. And not everybody's going to grow at the same okay. speed, not in the same ways. And so I know I've been going through a lot of things. There are certain parts of my family. They're all kind of going through their own different stuff. And we're, we have moments like today. It's like we really love each other. And we're really part of each other's lives, but sometimes it's like, okay, I'm really done talking to these people right now. <laughs> I love you, but I need a few hours away. <laughs> it's just, you know, you have growing pains and it's kind of chaotic. And and sometimes I love our quirky chaoticness and, and our borderline dysfunctional mess that we get into. And some days it's just on my last nerve. It really depends. <laughs> but we're family. So no matter what changes in life and, and what grows, we always make the that decision of we are family it mm -hmm. always comes back to that um you know i i know some people i'm, I'm gonna call them distant cousins but i'm not exactly sure how but I let one little thing in their lives keep them from speaking to someone for 20 years it's like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sorry I, we can go through some pretty huge major things and we're still sending a birthday card or calling and saying you know happy whatever day you know we don't lose touch we we make that choice to even when it really sucks to just keep going because we are family and then mm. you know we bring people in and like i said i have a lot of friends that i consider family and some of them i've never met in person yet it's just you know you have a connection with someone you love and respect them and you can help them grow and they can help you grow and it's just this process that i call family and so mm -hmm. then when you have that family kind of bumping into your blood family and they're like, oh, these are outsiders and, and you know, there's resistance and there's, there's a lot of grace being had <laughs> or being found in these different, <laughs> different moments. Um, it's hard, but everything in life is hard. And mm -hmm. sometimes you just have mm -hmm. to find it. it's like, okay, it is chaotic, mm -hmm. but we're still family. The foundation of it is this is who we are. And some days are going to be weirder and more difficult than others, but it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's a journey. It's never going to be a complete picture and finished. Like Lisa said, there's always that yet mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because next year it might be someone else's turn to grow through an awkward stage and, and we're going to drive them nuts just the way that they drove <laughs> me nuts or, or whatever. And you know, it's, it all comes full circle and it just keeps spiraling. Cause that's, that's the way it goes. That's the way life is. Mm. nothing static mm -hmm. yeah. but I, I think you hit upon something Brianna, and when you said that you know it takes work and I, I think it's unfortunate where a lot of our society is tending to go against uh anything that takes work and effort you know we're we're getting used to everything is instantaneous and if family isn't instantaneously perfect uh, or at least perfect in, in our perception, we're more apt to leave it than we are to do the work necessary, uh, you know, to make that family mm -hmm. function. And I, I see that so often, you know, people just for many different reasons, you know, just don't want work anymore, that they want it instantaneous to at least how they perceive it is supposed mm -hmm. to be. You know, there's gonna be somebody on my podcast named Tara Owens. Tara Owens, I think she says it like that instead. Um, and she's a spiritual director and she'll be on in, I believe it'll be in not this Friday, but the next Friday. And she talked about a really neat thing. And I think she calls it making a vow to stay or the discipline of staying. And that's what she's talking about too, for, for us, especially a, under a certain age who haven't developed these skills, but for anybody of, of us, this includes me for sure even though I consider myself born, you know, I'm born before the internet. So, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but 
but also just, you know, you're, anybody who has a smartphone is, is falling prey to this too. So you're somewhere, but you're somewhere else, you know, so you don't have to stay, mm -hmm. you can just go away, you know, you can not be there. And so she said, she was talking about the discipline of staying or the vow to stay. So that would be either staying where you are and actually being where you are, or being with the people where, where you are, which can be really hard if you're used to that dopamine every time you click the thing, you know, <laughs> um, or just staying where you are in terms of, um, Make, making a commitment to stay like at a job or in a, a living situation or whatever it is, like where people will kind of come and go out of people's lives, you know, and that when it gets bumpy or rough, which is normal, but it doesn't feel normal because we can just jet, you know, that especially for the younger generation that that has had a lot of their relationships like this. And, you know, this is like how they found their boyfriend or girlfriend or significant other and this is how they broke up with them and this is how they you know this is like the whole thing and then occasionally they'll be with each other mm -hmm. but like that's kind of the majority then they don't have to stay necessarily if it gets difficult it can just be right and so she, you know this it's an interesting it's an interesting skill you have to develop period as a human being totally but it's going to be even harder if you've gotten really used to popping in and out of people's lives using technology. It's just going to be mm -hmm. a, an extra discipline to to practice and work on and actually say, oh, wow, I really don't want to be here right now because this just got awkward, mm -hmm. but I'm going to be present anyway. And I, oh, I don't want to. And mm -hmm. I, I've just found myself doing that in the last few days, you know, with people in person, I'll be like, ah, I don't want to be in this conversation. <laughs> oh, I was like, and you want that? I wanted the dopamine hit of just, you know, the next text message or whatever it was, because it mm -hmm. would be so much more fun. Mm -hmm. I'm guilty. I'm like, I'm not, you know, I'm, it's, yeah. So, but, but the whole idea of, of like, you, we can't expect to have a, a better, our better relationships in real life, better relationships with our family, if we don't do those practices of staying and the, the vow of staying or the, the, mm -hmm. the discipline of staying. There isn't going to be any way to, to improve those things when we're just not yeah. being present. I, I couldn't agree more, and I'm looking forward to hearing the uh, podcast on that. But it, it is so important that that whole thing of being present. And so many people aren't. And that's really what I focus on with the mindfulness that, you know, life can be so much freer if we stayed in the present. You know, even in those awkward moments, if we can work our way through them, we might come to some learning either about us or the other person or each other. But we miss those learning opportunities when we just, you know, ditch it all and head out or, or head out by our phone, you know, and sitting there and, and, you know, and not just is it easy to do to get that dopamine hit, but it's becoming more and more acceptable in society. Mm -hmm. So if you're with a group of people and it is becoming uncomfortable and you pick up your phone, it's no longer that everybody gives this weird look, you know, it's, you're doing something where it's accepted that you're doing it. It's no big deal that you're doing it. So you can escape without being, you know, kind of ostracized that you were escaping. <laughs> yeah, to be like, so. whoop, 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 we caught you. Put your phone <laughs> down. You're supposed to be here. You know. Because probably there's other people in that group with their phones, too, that didn't even notice you picked up your phone. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's also like, this is what, this has happened to me at a party kind of recently i'm not gonna go into it but um you know they pick up their phone and then someone else did it's like oh two people did <laughs> there's two people here that's at one point is it not rude because i want to be here and i want to but also at some point when enough people are on their phones there's no one to talk to mm -hmm. and it's like can you put down uh, your yeah, phone yeah. so we can talk <laughs> well <laughs> if you know their numbers <laughs> you know, you could pick up your phone and Hi, text me. I'm still here at the party where you aren't. I just, I was like, sitting across from you. Like, Hi. Yeah, I did get dull a little bit, like, like you know, being some like a cookout or whatever, and you're and you're kind of like, mm -hmm. and you know, things were funny, and there were some stories, and then it kind of like hit a lull, and you're like, 
when someone picks up their phone, someone picks up their phone, and you're like, want to pick up my phone, want to pick up my phone. <laughs> Why I see that red light like, blinking. I wonder who it was. I'm like trying to focus on my interior world and maturity. I don't want to like, <laughs> like go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just it, it's like you you yeah. you're just as you're doing it just like everybody else. You know, I'm I'm doing it just like anybody else. But uh, but I'm also thinking like mm -hmm. there has to be like this sort of responsibility and I, and. and you know, at a party, it's like you can't very well. Although it's super tempting to just do the do the thing and be like, "Hi, I'm your hostess for the evening. Put your phone in this fishbowl, and you can't touch it." And we'd be like, "Well, last time I come to your party, Lisa, you're dumb." Exactly. <laughs> and, um, and so, like, that's obviously going to be a little heavy-handed. But like, it, it's almost like you almost need to commandeer their phone. And my um, mom's husband, who I'm not going to call him my stepdad because it's too too creepy and weird um but he was like the, the one of the times we came over to their house he's like um kind of off doing his own thing watching a game of some kind and so when he came back in we were all playing words with friends the the game but we were playing it with each other in mm -hmm. the same room but we were all he's like oh great so everyone's on their phone nice real nice so like but we're all playing a game together <laughs> and he's like oh Oh, like he's like, oh, I guess that's okay, you know. Oh, okay, that's okay. So mm -hmm. then, then later on in the evening, he he's like, he saw us all on our phones again, and that time I don't think it was so legit. And he's like, you know what I should do? I should take all your phones. I should take I should take all your phones, and we should put them all somewhere, and then you can't have your phones. Mm -hmm. Now he had been occupied with something else, and I was kind of like, you're not my dad. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> And we're back to the dysfunctional <laughs> family. I'm not going to do that in my 40s, but but I was like, if, if so help me God, if I had been a teenager and my mom had married that man, there would have been a murder suicide. Because I would have been like, that is, that is it. Do not cross me. Okay. So I was just like, but he was so irritated. I mean, I understand it, but like, um, like what do you say obviously that wasn't going to go over very well like i should take all your phones but like i know it's not great it's it's really difficult and, it's and easy to well i was not too long ago um i don't know it was a week or two ago i was in this social situation and i'm not real fond of social situations <laughs> I'm kind of an introvert just, well i'm an ambivert but that day i was kind of leaning towards the introvert side. And it's like, I could have sat there for six hours with a book, no problem. Give me Netflix, no problem. I had people that were talking to me that weren't really talking to me. They were talking at me, they were ignoring me. If I had something to say, it would get met with some sort of disdain. It's like, you know, this just isn't fun. And I don't have a choice but to stick around for another couple hours because I don't have my car here. But um, mm. there's a really great conversation online. So I'm gonna jump into that. And so I was on my phone off and on. I was still part of the conversation there in the room. Um, but my attention was definitely split and I was not hiding them. You know, and, and so it's like, yeah, I feel bad, but I don't. Because if I had a choice, I would have gone home an hour ago. <laughs> but, you know, it, it, it's, we have become a society that we don't have the same um, social customs that we used to. And so yeah. when, mm -hmm. when a social setting starts deteriorating and you're not valued as part of the conversation or you're left out of the conversation. And I, I granted, I know I am an introvert, so I kind of encourage that on myself a little bit sometimes by just not um, not really jumping in as much as I could. Um, and, and then you get me on a blab call and I never shut up. But, <laughs> but you know, it, it's, it's easy to find that, well, here's a conversation where I'm validated. And in this conversation face to face, mm -hmm. I'm not. So I know what choice I want to make. And it's mm -hmm. really hard to put that phone down. And sometimes I regret mm -hmm. that I didn't give it another shot or didn't try a different angle and try to improve the situation. And sometimes mm -hmm. it's like, no, I'm glad. I'm glad I chose the phone instead. It just mm -hmm. it varies. I don't think we really have the right mm -hmm. rules to navigate it. It can't be an all or nothing situation, not in today's mm -hmm. society. And yeah. I just don't, I just don't mm -hmm. know what the etiquette really is. Yeah. Well, and I don't even know if society knows what the etiquette is. 
you know, this in, in the scope of things is still such a very new technology that what is the proper use of it in a public setting? You know, and I, I think what we're going to find out is maybe another generation or so we can really start to, you know, put down, well, what are proper and acceptable social norms? But, you know, what when you still have, you know, a generation and maybe half a generation that really wasn't raised on this from day one, mixed with a generation that is raised on this from day one, it, it's still evolving, you know, it's what are we going to do with it? You know, and, and I think what's important is to remember that the technology is a tool, mm-hmm. you know, and, and how do we best use the tool that we have? And, you know, so I, I don't see it as an evil, you know, and some people say, you know, well, this is what breaks apart families or well, it's, it's how you yeah. use it. You know, I mean, it, it could or it couldn't. Yeah. You know, or it becomes the great excuse. You know, we, we don't want to blame what, what's really at fault in the family. So let's just blame the technology because, right. you know, we'll yell back. Yeah, you could say the same thing about TV. It's family stop talking and they mm-hmm. just start watching TV. Or you could say, yeah. well, TV, you can watch a show and then talk about it. Or you could, you know, right. anything could be used divisively to. But do, does break anybody actually do that? Do people yeah. actually watch TV and talk about the show they just watched? Because mm-hmm. when I've been in a setting where, you know, you could be having a conversation, but someone's got the TV on. It's always a little too loud to talk about what's going on. And well, as soon not- as that show ends, we go into another show and another show and another show, and then everybody <laughs> leaves. So th- there's well, no yeah. dialogue. I mean, except during commercials. <laughs> so well, th- then you create a group <laughs> chat about the show. And you're show. texting people while you're watching TV. And, yeah, you're and right everybody back on the phone. phone in the group chat. <laughs> well, I mean, with my kids, I've, we've watched a movie sometimes and then just we'll stop it and we'll say, we'll explain something. Mm-hmm. And then this happened last night. This was a little bit unusual, but we watched this movie called The Program about Lance Armstrong. Now, my husband's a big time cyclist. So he was like, so here's what happened. <laughs> and we're like, oh, okay. And then he'd be like, and they'd be like, now this is controversial. We don't know if this happened or if this didn't happen. I'm like, he was a doper. I always knew. Um, so, you know, it was kind of like, because it was like sort of historical, but it not a totally, you know, so it was like, we'd stop mm-hmm. or sometimes we'll watch something and we'll stop and we'll say, it'll be like a, it'll be like a teachable moment with the kids we don't do that when friends come over but um that would be really odd now now see i do that with my with i have a few friends and i have my mom and we'll do that kind of stuff you can if it's like yeah but but the majority of the time with my family or yeah if if the tv's on nobody's talking (laughs) well you know the the thing about using technology as a tool one of the ways i one of the ways we could probably go into it with other people this is how i felt the most um, connected and loved is when I've been with a group of a s- small group, like five people or less, maybe three to five people. And we've been talking and it's gotten really deep. And then someone has a question about something and someone will just ask Siri or look it up on Wikipedia for like one little thing. And, oh, this is actually what this means. Mm-hmm. And then we get some kind of thing off the interwebs and then we go back to whatever it is we're doing but it it brings us together instead of like oh hang on but i have felt very loved when someone said oh so and so's called me but i'm with you right now Mm -hmm. and that has really been a thing that you know where there has been a boundary not that it has to happen that way 100 percent of the time but i have noticed that when i'm when i'm with people um and that's like sacred space or that you can create places that are sacred space, mm-hmm. whether it's with your family or close friends or whatever. And you say, no, you know, I'm with you and that's it. Or, you know, maybe there's an emergency call and there's a couple numbers. If they come in, you have to take them. But, um, but basically you say you use the thing as a tool mm-hmm. in rare times. And then the mm-hmm. rest of the time is like, you know, for the next half an hour, you're, you, you get my full attention. You get my full, um, you know, I'm all yours. And that, that makes them feel good and then that bounces back and makes you feel good too. Mm-hmm. It's definitely a good tool to have handy when you play Trivial Pursuit with my mother. <laughs> Did you know chickens have earlobes? I mean, seriously, this is something we learned last week. <laughs> chickens have earlobes and the color of the earlobes apparently affects the color of the eggs. I don't know. It's amazing. It's amazing how interesting game night becomes when you have Google right there in your hand. <laughs> I don't believe that at all. Google it. 
She I'm did. Googling <laughs> earlobes of chickens. I don't know. Here, okay, I am. <laughs> don't you dare Google chicken earlobes, Chris. I lose all the respect for you. That's you have you on a full journey. <laughs> <Really? laughs> How dare you? Come in here on this flap and say no, seriously, on a full I, errand. I am a writer. I am a creative person, but I could not pick up chickens <laughs> having earlobes to save my life. I swear to you. It was an actual question on a real life Trivial Pursuit card. Um, the I think it was Venus 2 well, edition because I think they were the blue boxes, but they yes. may have been the black ones. I can't remember which ones we grabbed that night. You're making this up, aren't you? No. I, 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 he's not going to be able to find I, I just it. Googled it. Uh, according to a website, mypetchicken.com. <laughs> I don't thing. know. You can order chickens through them. <laughs> that chicken earlobes do look at the color of the egg. If a chicken has red earlobes, according to them, eggs. they lay brown eggs. No, uh, Siri says no. No, I'm kidding. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So you can imagine the the oh, interesting conversations. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So my mother and I we we she's learn lying. more. My mother and I learn more playing so I, Trivial okay. Pursuit and looking up these bizarre things oh. than we would read in a book. And I, and then because it's so hilarious, the especially the conversation that goes with it. Chickens have earlobes and it indicates it sticks egg color. in your head. You yeah. know what? I'm so disappointed that chickens have earlobes right now. I know. I it's don't a, want them to have them. It's this very strange reality you have to sit with for a while and come to terms with before you can move on in life. <laughs> this well, is really digressed. We're at 901 has, right now. It has. Yes. But the point is, it technology has. can I'm be a tool. I'm looking at a picture right now of a chicken here, <laughs> Technology can be a tool that improves your family life, or it can destroy it. Let's bring it full circle back to the theme. <laughs> and then chickens having... Thank you, Rhiannon, for bringing us to reality. Your lobes can become an inside family joke, which just makes it more perfect. Because we actually texted my brother before Googling it and said, do chickens have earlobes? And he says, they are when they're drunk, or they do when they're drunk. And I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> he but was that's with the random, chicken. He was that's with a beautiful chicken randomness right of my brother. So. He happened to be with a chicken Probably. at a petting zoo, having Probably. a heavy petting zoo. Yeah. <laughs> and he knew and because yeah. of the, the yeah. color of the eggs obviously right right yeah, yeah. No, just... but i i will say i will say that i'm, I'm glad you brought that up Rand, in the sense that one i do have a picture of a chicken <laughs> earlobes on my screen right now because i did can you it. put that on twitter and later two... or instagram that instagram that for us get a screenshot and instagram it i, I yeah. should i, I should Use it to promote that'll the be lab. the, the... <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That'll be the cover of the of the blab we talk about chicken earlobes for that. And Other chickens <laughs> could find that offensive. I, I will. I will try for to chickens, find that's a very... every different species I can, so we can generalize <laughs> for chickens, it. That could be a but, very uh, sensual area. I don't. It could. I don't know how they. <laughs> I I will put a little asterisk Just that flavor. says no offense <laughs> like, to chickens who are offended. If you are at, but, uh, like mature chicken audiences only. <laughs> okay, so there we, you go. So so don't there post it during heavy traffic on farm Twitter. You know, whenever the farmers, whatever time of day farmers are most on Twitter, just avoid that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but but I do like what you're saying, Rand, and in the sense that <laughs> try to salvage this conversation. Come on, I dare you. <laughs> oh. oh, I can because sometimes my clinical sessions do this, <laughs> and, and we can wrap it back She's up. She's saying at the you end. need to see someone. Well, I am. She's a wonderful <laughs> lady. But I'll tell her on Thursday exactly oh, how this went. <laughs> Wait, but you're not seeing me? Wait, wait, wait a minute. You're seeing somebody else. Um, so, but to bring it back, what, what I, I would say is, in what you were just saying, though, look at this family moment. You know, without that, you know, you're missing a whole family moment. So, you know, I, I do think in, in these imperfections, in these technologies, in, in this whatever, 
you you're telling this great story that probably is going to live with you and family lore for <laughs> many many decades. You know, and probably be written yeah. down somewhere in, in your family storybook somewhere. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Someday, if I can keep a straight face, I will tell you a story about Thelonious Monk, and I don't even know who he is. <laughs> He's a jazz great. Uh -huh. I thought you liked music. He's a jazz I, legend. I love music, and I do <laughs> like jazz. And I know I've heard of him, but I couldn't cool. tell you a single song he's done. We were playing. Oh gosh, I can't remember. Takes my head. SMA. It was crazy. SMA. I know. That doesn't know Thelonious Ooh. Monk. I mean, come on. <laughs> I don't even have to Google that. <laughs> I'm from rural Missouri where everything is country or Chicken classic Carolina. rock. Yeah. She, just... I, you know, I'm surrounded by Amish farms, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. I, I I don't see why that justifies you not knowing Thelonious Monk. But well, anyways, I know, if, well, if that yeah. works for you. I know Billie Holiday and Big May Bell and gosh. <laughs> I can listen to Lyle Love It all day. He's not jazz, but he's one of my favorites of because he he doesn't fit in a genre. Love it is good. Coltrane and uh, any, any I, I've heard of him. Um, there's a handful of Miles Davis songs I could play on repeat for like mm. a year and not get tired of them. Yeah. All right, you're okay. You're okay. <laughs> yeah, you're you're saving I yourself. My, my reputation yet. <laughs> you, you you are safe from the Duke yes. Ellington, Benny Goodman, okay, Andrew right. Sisters. Okay, okay, back in back. Now she's reading off her screen after she no, Googled no, jazz I read right after your loves. That's me do, I need to, do I need to start singing some of these? <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a chicken earlobe joke in there somewhere, but I'll leave that one out. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So. But, but see, you know, when people could hear this, they could say, oh, this doesn't make sense. Look at how, you know, imperfect their discussion <laughs> yeah. is. But isn't this family life yeah. yeah. I, I like to tell people when when they talk about uh you know looking at what is um a dysfunctional versus functional family and you know one of the things i like to say is you know well if a family can function in their dysfunction what's mm. the problem that's good that's good so yeah and even um and for friendships too because you're gonna not always agree and you're not gonna always see eye to eye and you're gonna you know um hurt each other's feelings sometimes and stuff like that, but how, yeah. how it happens, it's totally, totally different. Mm -hmm. um, you know, cause it's like, I know with my, in my family upbringing, and this is, might have not been how it was, but this is how I figured out it was, it was like, here's how you do a fight. You slash and burn and you nuke the other thing and then you win, you win your fights. Like uh -huh. you don't, <laughs> there's a loser and there's a winner. And, and so it was like, it's always felt very competitive in general, but like competitive in fights. And so I remember those first couple of years of being married, I was like, I won. <laughs> oh, that, that's <laughs> so not the way to go. Like, you know, it's like this crumpled spouse, like, like in the corner, like, I would have never done that to her. And I was like, I won. <laughs> it was like, At what cost? Mm -hmm. You know, it was just like, that is not the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess I won. Woohoo. But it was like, but the collateral damage is like how, I mean, that's dysfunction. That's what's going on. You know, it was just like, there's got to be another way. I mean, of course there's other ways, but I didn't know what that was. I had to totally learn how to fight, not fight dirty and, and not fight, you know, fight with a long-term view, not just fight for like a short-term mm -hmm. bragging rights or something like, I won that argument. Right. How cool am I? But it's like, but if you don't know any better, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. my parents split up. Someone won the fight. I don't know who won. I mean, we all lost. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? We all lost. Yeah. Right. Is there a winner yeah. in that one? And I... so that's to me, I was like, yeah, I don't know how this is going to work out. <laughs> it's like, how do how do you fight without someone really, really losing? Like losing their like self-respect, <laughs> losing their dignity, mm -hmm. like losing because mm -hmm. it's personal because it would get could get really personal. And, mm -hmm. and so it's like you really have to like not just behave yourself, but actually like lovingly disagree it's not easy now i'm still mm. married <laughs> it's just because he's stubborn he's you're winning he's stubborn and he was just like he's just kind of like what is 
like, what do you do? <laughs> and I was like, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you know, we got counseling. I mean, like you have to, like, what, what that's going to work. Obviously not. Like you just have to learn a better way. And so I, but I, but I wanted to work on it. I was like, I can't destroy this like perfectly nice person. <laughs> you know, he's like the kindest person I ever met. Like, what am I going to do? Light him on fire and blow him up and be like, I win. I'm the winner. You know, it's like what you're saying is like, that is totally dysfunctional. Do I want to raise kids in that environment? Yeah. No. So, one of the, yeah. One of the things I actually really love about my brother and I growing up, he was 10 years younger than I was. So there was all kinds of weird attitudinal sibling rivalry. We could go from zero to 90 and back again like that, you know? And I love that we were allowed to fight. Hmm. We were allowed to air our grievances, mm -hmm. be completely honest, slam doors, which, okay, mom didn't like that we slammed doors and yelled and screamed at each other, but we got it out. And 10 minutes later, we'd be like, so I uh, got the new Tomb Raider game on on PlayStation. Come on. And and we'd be best buddies all night, even at 10 years difference. Mm -hmm. And so we learned that. And we were always that, that dynamic, even though it kind of sucked when we would fight too much, but that was sort of normalized. Mm -hmm. And then he got married. And his wife was very, was from a family who did not fight. You had to play nice. So you just bottled everything up mm -hmm. and you were just miserable, mm -hmm. but you didn't fight. You didn't ever let anyone know that you weren't, you were upset about anything. And so she, they lived with me for a short time and she witnessed a couple of our fights and she was terrified. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'd be, you know, in the kitchen making scrambled eggs and singing stupid music together. You know, it, it blew her mind. She's like, how? Yeah. You, you went from... You went from mm -hmm. this normal everyday thing to you hated each other to let's have breakfast for dinner at midnight and bop around the kitchen being silly. Where did that come from? Mm -hmm. It's like we were just comfortable in our honesty. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. you know, she told me today, because that was about five or six years ago when when they lived with me. And she told me today, I'm really glad that <laughs> we've learned that fighting isn't the worst thing in the world. Mm -hmm. And then we move on. She's finally getting it, and she mm -hmm. thanked me for that this morning. Wow! And I had I had kind of forgotten about it. Yeah. Like I said, that was normal for us. Mm. And you know, no, I'm I'm not proud of all of our fights, and we <laughs> say some some pretty evil things on occasion. But <laughs> but we we kind of filter out what we really mean because we know each other well enough, and we just go on and you know find common ground and and start the day over again or or something. You know, just. Right. It, it worked for us. And, uh, and, and that's a prime example of what I mean when I say, you know, that, you know, you function in the dysfunction, you know, because you might have some people from the outside look at that and say, you know, that's wrong. That's not right. You know, you need counseling. You need this. You need. But it works right. for you. And, you know, you guys are close and, and it works. So, you know, that in, in my mind talks about, you know, what is the perfect family? Well, some people would say, you know, oh, no, you got to work on this. And, you know, where I would look at that story and say, that's your perfect family. Yeah. You know, that's a, that's what a works friend for you. posted a picture on Facebook a few years ago of, of um, the, the get along shirt. I think that's what they called it, where it was just a giant mm. T-shirt. And if you're if you have two little kids and they're fighting, oh, yeah. you make them wear the T-shirt together until they can learn to get along. <laughs> You know that if my mother had nice. tried to do that with my brother and I, we would have killed each other. Like, there sure would be a bloody pile on the floor. There would be no people left. <laughs> because we, were, we could make each other so explosive. And if you forced us to get along, no. But if you let us air it out, and then we would get along naturally mm -hmm. on our own as soon as it blew over. And I mean, like, five, ten minutes later. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's like, and, and that that's... works for your kids, great. But I'm warning you, <laughs> if they are anything like us, that is not a good idea. <laughs> Unless you have really good and, and that's you know. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, when all the families find their way of, you know, making sense of the world and that to me is normal. That's perfect. That that's who you all we call are. It putting the fun in discussion. <laughs> <laughs> I like that phrase too. I, I'm totally for it. <laughs> I, I have no issue. <laughs> yes, uh, non non dysfunctional people are usually born. Yes. Well, it, it's that that's its own dysfunction then. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> yeah, I would always thought that the people who who appear to be dis, uh, to appear to be functional is that they have probably stuff going on behind closed closed doors that you don't know about. And I've seen that to be to play out to be true. There were just secrets. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, yeah. my family, like I told you, was pretty much out there. And and I I had thought that, you know, well, a family that doesn't argue, that's that's probably the way to go. But there's a lot of torpedoes under the surface that happen in those mm -hmm. kind of families, and then you don't know where the next bomb's coming from. And I would actually prefer mm -hmm. that someone just say, hey, I have a problem. Let's just talk about this. Let's just get it. Let's just like lance the boil and get it over with. Then be like, wait a minute. Yeah. Was that a snide comment? Is that, did that mean something? Is that like, should I watch my back? Because the fighting I, happens. It's mm -hmm. just not visible. Yeah. And it's the and fighting it's still happens. like you have to read my mind and kind of like figure out this nasty comment meant something, but from like three weeks ago and, and I'm very confused mm -hmm. by that. So I usually were like, okay, I guess everything, is everything okay? Sure. I'll be like, great. All right. <laughs> I'm, like, mm -hmm. what? I'm going to just yeah. trust that you're going to be honest with me. And if you're going to be like, no, you figure it out. Ha ha. Or like, uh, of course, I'm not going to tell you, but I'll just be like, I'm just going to take you at your word. Okay. Well, I'm just going to take you at your word and be like, well, she didn't get it. She's so dumb. I'm like, well, I just don't have the energy or the time. Like I, this is a, this is low. This is a high RPM, very small horsepower engine right here. So like, <laughs> it's just like, you know, really chug, 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 chug. And then I go to sleep and I'm, I'm just gone. So do not tax mm -hmm. this. Just, just, just tell me straight out. I can't figure out more than just, just mm -hmm. this. No game playing, no walking on eggshells, no second nope. guessing, no veiled messages. If you have a problem, say it, just please, deal with it, just, move on. Mm -hmm. yeah, because I can't really get, I don't understand that. I understand, like, I hate you. Get out of my face. <laughs> I'm like, oh, well, thank you for letting me know. What, what can we do to work on this? And I'm like, oh, is that easy? Mm -hmm. And then it's over. See, that's the that's mm -hmm. the problem is like, yep. you know, bringing up this is, well, that you said that to me before and you always do this. I'm like, always? You, you, this is the first time you tell me always? Like, for mm -hmm. how long will every single time? It's like, <laughs> the first time you tell me is now that's your fault <laughs> like, mm -hmm. like i'm not that's like bring it up so so it's mm -hmm. it's always like i would rather just and maybe you know that can be intimidating i realize but just write me a note and just write me a note <laughs> I don't know, something. Yeah, there you go <laughs> just text, text you, you know I, we have to talk you know whatever but yep. it's just like i think that it, i think that it's kind of like fear but like i'm just still going to get you I'm, it's still going to be punitive and there's still a problem yeah. but you're not going to really know what it is but you better have to figure it out mm -hmm. it's like you know i would rather mm -hmm. just have a bloody fight <laughs> and just be like <laughs> you know just just actually yep. i'd rather even be just like physically hit in the face and, and not really know what's happening because you know mm -hmm. oh apparently you don't like me right now <laughs> yeah no that that's very true I, I i think that's what makes relationships healthier and you know and people who can do that i think that's what leads more into what we would call as, as you know the perfect family in that sense you know it's you know, it's not the perfect families and the ones who never have a disagreement and, you know, who never get upset at each other. That's that to me is not the perfect family that that is the abnormal. There's a big problem. And how many bodies are there? <laughs> <where? laughs> this oh, just or isn't or right. Watch the divorce is happening in 12 and a half minutes. <laughs> you know? Yeah. 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 This bomb. just isn't normal. Normal is a ticking time bomb in so many areas, in, in my opinion. Just, yeah, and also yeah. it could be like it, totally they agree. look they look normal. I've seen this happen a bunch of times. Looks really normal. Everybody's like, you know, squeaky clean on Sunday. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. the, the wife's having an affair. The, the the boy is like closeted gay for 10 years. The guy is like major porn addiction, and you're and all of a sudden it just goes boom, and you're like, oh, I never guessed. You're like, mm -hmm. really? Yeah. You, you thought that was <laughs> you thought that was squeaky clean? Really? No one was saying nothing. Okay, that that just yep. looks super suspicious mm -hmm. to me. I'm just like, I'm sorry, but no <laughs> one's that like, no one's got that figured out because it's impossible. Like, you have to see people. 
you have to see people not have a good day. You have to see people mm -hmm. frustrated sometimes yeah. or that it's fake. It's a mask. Like people have bad days. Uh, at least yeah. they get sick. I mean, like there has to be some bad days. So yeah. if, it, if they're really smiling constantly all the time, they're like, I guess drug, drug addicted maybe, probably, but yeah. like there's as, something. As a writer, I know that if I'm not authentic in my writing, people can't relate to it. So if you're being inauthentic mm -hmm. as a person, especially within a family unit, the, uh, the rest of the family unit is not going to be able to relate to you. And they'll, everyone's doing their own inauthentic web of lies, this perfect image, and none of it is real. That's, that's not building anything. There's no foundation. There's, there's no true relationship there. There's no back and forth. It's just everyone existing in their little bubble and trying to maintain an image and, and bubbles pop and images fade. And then it's just mm -hmm. a disaster. And I'd, I'd rather mm -hmm. say, okay, here are my scars. Here are my quirks. I'm going to drive you crazy once in a while, but we're in this together, right? <laughs> now tell me you're human too. And then, you know, then you find that and you can relate over those things and you will drive each other crazy. You will fight, but you'll also laugh. You'll also have stories to tell. You'll also find out chickens have earlobes or whatever. You know, you'll have these experiences that, that build something instead of just maintain an image for other people. Mm -hmm. yeah yep, yeah and i true. think that's the thing that's the thing about the perfect family is to think that the perfect family is going to be a messy mm -hmm. family but it's going to be like one that uh, that eventually um you, you're going to keep at it you're going to keep trying to make even when there's misunderstandings and re even really hurt feelings that you're going to say how can we try to make this better yeah that didn't go very well or we've had we've had some real bumps here but now what mm -hmm. now what are we going to do about it and that's that's kind of the perfect family because you're you're going to not be finished with you know we're not gonna, well you know instead of oh let's pretend every let's let's never talk about that let's pretend everything's great let's let's make sure that nobody sees that we're imperfect or that um i better not you know like when i hear um people go like they're just about to tell you something that's not working in their life and they go, Oh, I, I better not say anything about that. Right. And you're thinking really, because then I would think you weren't perfect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Figure. <laughs> okay. Okay. Like, like it's just like, then I wouldn't, then I would know you and know that you have bad days. Mm -hmm. like, and, and so it's like, well, you know, so then it, there's all this energy to prep up the facade. I'm like, Oh my, especially this, this can happen in, I don't know if you've ever, notice this Rhiannon, but like in sometimes in women's like Bible studies, it'll be like prayer requests. Well, you know, these lame old prayer requests yeah. that aren't really any big oh, deal. Timmy yet. has, Timmy has and, a big and calculus then, test on Friday. Let's pray him through it. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> yeah. And meanwhile, you know, meanwhile, you know that like the prayer request should be like, I'm incredibly, incredibly mm -hmm. lonely or, or just, or just mm -hmm. you know, whatever, like, like their heart is yeah. breaking, but they'll never going to, they're never going to tell you or, um, I had that back surgery. Well, now I'm taking, uh, now I'm taking opiates, you know, or like, like right. whatever it is, you know, like that the actually real serious mm -hmm. or they're, they're ashamed, mm -hmm. but you're not going to see that because they're going to be like, I'm a real spiritual mm -hmm. lady. And you, yeah. you're going to have to see, like, I'm kind of Martha Stewart, but who loves mm -hmm. Jesus, you know, it's just like, and you'll see it a lot because they don't, people don't want to disappoint other people or mm -hmm. let them down and be like, like people used to um i met this woman who who's a co-worker and so for a while she she was kind of like a recent christian and she was like totally afraid to like swear around me even though she's like potty mouth girl and she you know she liked whiskey i already knew this about her but she's like oops oops and i'm like are you afraid to swear around me is that is that what it is i said I, and she's like and i said i don't care about that and she was like Oh, because she knew me from church. You know, mm -hmm. I was just like, I was kind of like drop the game, you know, because it was like, it was seems so like, well, she knows me from church. Yes. So yeah, Oops. You know, but, but I was kind of like, you know, so I, I guess it was just kind of like, she knew that I was from church. So she was going to try to really clean up and change around me. But I was kind of like, well, that's not who you are. Mm -hmm. You're going to be like with like one way with me. But then like when I walk out of right. the room, you're going to, be a completely different person. Right. And like, I actually wanted to get to know her. I was interested in be becoming friends with her. So 
how is that going to work out? <laughs> it was just like, mm -hmm. And now we're like, you know, we're buds. And I was just like, so I just told her about a really, really crappy thing that had just happened to me. And I threw a couple expletives in there so that she knew that it was okay. Mm -hmm. I actually don't really ever, almost ever swear, <laughs> but like out there, just like at work. Okay. But, um, but I figured like, she was kind of like, what? Um, but I also was kind of like, who cares? You know, it's less like, drop the game. Let's drop the game. Yeah, I, I'm not going to. When I was about 20 yeah. or so, I was in this Bible study. It was a Beth Moore Bible study. And I don't know if you're familiar with Beth Moore, but she's, she's this lovely person, but she's very proper, you know, and, and the whole class kind of took on that vibe. It was a women's class and um, everybody there was, was, had this image, you know, and, and I was, like I said, I was 20, but I, I was also kind of fitting an image, just not quite the image they were. I really didn't know who I was then, but um or, or they would not have even let me in the class if <laughs> they wouldn't let me now in that class. But but one of my aunt's friends was there and she kind of had this image too, you know, to, to maintain. And we weren't real close or anything. But after the class let out, I had forgotten something. And so I went back and she was still sitting there alone and she was kind of teary. And otherwise this wouldn't have happened because, you know, like like you said, Lisa, that very superficial prayer request kind of time had already happened and she was just kind of teary and just you could tell i could tell she was not kosher she was just not having a good time and i'm like are you okay and she says you know that verse tonight i just i'm really struggling with it i said isn't that the point i mean the, her saying i'm struggling with it was like this big thing she was so ashamed of admitting that she didn't just get it and she couldn't just accept it and um, and i don't even remember what the verse was but she was having this moment and she was struggling i'm like isn't that the point if you're struggling mm -hmm. you're trying mm -hmm. that that's the whole point of all of this isn't it we're trying to learn things we're trying to broaden our beliefs and and you know em embrace this new information so you're struggling that's the point mm -hmm. and she's like yeah. i hadn't thought of it like that <laughs> but, yeah, the but the you could just tell she felt peaceful because she'd admitted this thing and she was like so ashamed because she was struggling yeah. over this verse mm -hmm. no just be real why didn't you say something before and I, I think seeing her go through that i actually maybe became a little more vocal for the time that i would i had left in the class i wasn't able to finish the class but it was like okay if she's afraid to admit something mm. like that, maybe if I go first and say and ask a, ask some more questions or or um, present what I have to say a little differently, maybe it'll encourage other people to kind of do the mm -hmm. same. And, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and and I think that's you know that's the what we're looking for and what do you call the the perfect family or or relationships and. Um, you know, for me, it, it is in those imperfections and those growth moments and there you are know, times when we can be real with people. Um, so to me, that's that's a definition of the perfect family. Mm -hmm. You know, not mm -hmm. what our society would want us to think, but, you know, that's what at least I think it is. That, that's what I've seen. I, I've yet to see anything different. Mm -hmm. Should we close it up? Yeah, I was just going to say, <laughs> looking at the time. <laughs> go for an hour just just to let some of we've got a few more people than when we started but just to kind of go back i don't think we ever introduced ourselves but we will tend to do this during the summer we're going to try to meet on sundays at about eight o'clock and discuss things i'm not sure what we'll discuss next time but we tend to have really great talks and this has been really fun mm -hmm. um i'm i'm lisa delay and i have a podcast twice a week called spark my muse you could just i'll, I'll type in where you can find that and chris do you want to talk about what you do and don't you leave Rihanna, you ran and you got to talk, talk to yeah, you're you're next on there. And uh, I'm a counselor and have a podcast and uh, you can find me at life's journey blog.com and you'll get the links to the podcast and my blog and uh, all my services and all that kind of stuff. Rihanna. Well, um, I'm Rhiannon Hall. You can find me on Twitter at Rhiannon Hall 47, like it says right there under my name. Um, I have a blog that seems to be mostly poetry lately, but it, I occasionally mm -hmm. post random things. Um, 
and I'll post a link here in just a minute. Um, I'm just an all around creative and dysfunctional person. Yes. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> there you have it. Lo love the tagline. <laughs> all around creative I, and dysfunctional. I, I don't have an actual job title. I don't have a podcast. You know, I'm just that kind of a mess. Like a good... <laughs> you're, you're the, um... I, I like it. <laughs> I, I roped Rhiannon in here to be the, she's so good at blab that I love. I just, I'm like, I'm doing blab. Come on in. <laughs> she's like, do I really have to come in? Not just this time. This isn't just the only time. I'm like, please come in. She's like, really? What? And I'm like, please. Because she it makes it easy for me. I'm like, because it just gets, it bounces back and forth. They're like, she has a good vibe. So I, I agree. I, I can ramble on for hours, apparently. It's, it's a skill. You're not just dysfunctional and creative. You're like blabtastic. Oh. <laughs> my, gran my grandmother Hashtag. once my grandmother once said, you really have the gift of blab. So apparently she meant it. She, oh, was, she was she prophetic had, and didn't even she, know. Yeah, she had spe oh, some special, you know? <laughs> special gifts of her own. But oh. yeah, this has been good. I don't know what we'll wind up. If, if anybody has an idea of what we could talk about for July, we can figure out a July date mm. in the future and just, you can follow along on Twitter and, and, or blab you can follow and then you'll, you'll get a, an alert when we come up next time for another chat. And if you have some suggestions or ideas, we tend to do, I don't know what, if we have, do we tend to have, would you say we had a theme going at all or mm. a lot of different no. stuff, but it tends to be not your typical blab, chats it's more yeah. it's deep it's deep how to improve your life somehow not it's just how to like make money or how to do a blab so we're not ever doing exactly. those um, <laughs> but yeah it tends to be you know more of um your self-improvement and things mm -hmm. like that mindfulness we've done things like that and they'll probably be in those veins too but I, I say it's just life yeah, yeah. We're just talking about life and if it were the same topic all the time people would get bored i like the eclectic feel the we're a little bit everywhere yeah. i i will guarantee you no other blab and in, in all of today talked about chicken lobes <laughs> i will guarantee I that i you i defy exactly. you to find a chicken lobe related blab Ever. <laughs> probably ever yeah i was thinking with today but probably ever probably ever so, in the history of blab yeah <laughs> yeah, so people need to tune in word. for the eclectic nature of yeah. Spread the word. Yeah. This should go in the Blab Hall of Fame. That's <laughs> I'd like to be nominated right now. Uh, not me so much, of course, but man and could be <laughs> the chicken earlobe person. Blab rock star. I, I, I am I am the, the source of all oddness for you guys. So <laughs> all. No, you're not. You're not that, you're like a goddess of oddness. Oh, poetry. I like that. Can I put that on a business card? I am the goddess of oddness. I can get you business cards like that for so, so cheap. That's what I do. There we go. <laughs> All right. Well, All right, all. yeah, I'm going to head out, but it's been fun. Thank you uh, to both We've of you and Chris everybody who's listening. <laughs> it's been Thanks, Chris. fun. Thank you. Have, Bye. Happy Father's right. Day, Chris. Bye, everybody. Happy Bye -bye. Father's Day, Chris. Thank you for listening to this episode with Chris Shea. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com.